Well, it's time for a morning swim here at 10 a.m. local time in Budapest. Double headers have begun as the ISL 2020 season heads towards the home stretch of the regular season. The Iron, Toronto Titans, DC Triton, all trying to catch the defending champions, Energy Standard, whose eyes are upon possibly their second win of the season. At the moment, there's only two unbeaten teams in ISL 2020. Cali Condors, London War, those two teams will battle later today. But it's Energy Center trying to get their second win of the season as DC Triton has their final regular season matchup today here inside the Duna Arena. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Rowdy Gaines. I'm Bernie Guthrie, so glad to have you with us. Rowdy, uh, this is an important matchup, obviously, for Energy Standard. They really found their winning ways, and the question is, can they keep their momentum going today? Yeah, I think it was a wake-up call that very first match when they lost to Cali, and I think they came back in a big way the last match, and I, I think they've kind of found their way now, and they're going to be back with their best swimmer, uh, as well. Yeah, the great news for James Gibson and Energy Standard is Sarah Schoistrom. She is back in the lineup and the captain is ready to go. Uh, she really will be. And, I, you know, with a bad back, she actually hurt her back putting on her jeans. That's something an old man like me would do. But she feels much better. She'll be swimming a couple events today, and that's good news for Energy in the pool, but more importantly, out of the pool for the team captain. And we are going to see her battle against Team Irons, her Nomi. Kromovic Yo-Yo. Number one versus number two all time in the 50 freestyle, without a doubt, the match of the day with that world record holder. Well, but earlier Toronto took on Energy Standard and it was tight on day one, mainly because of Kylie Moss. It really was, Bernie. The 400 medley, really a little bit of an upset. They won that and it was really that leadoff leg by Kylie Moss. They picked the skins and it was Kylie Moss that got to swim the 50 back and won it. All right, double header. Match seven begins with a 100 meter butterfly. We will not see Sarah Shoys from battle here in this 100 butterfly. But it's not all bad news for Energy Standard because they had Maddie Bannock and Anastasia. Shakurdai step up, in, and those two were one two last time. Think about it. You've got the world record holder and Sarah Shoystrom all-time fastest swimmer in this event. And right now she sits third behind her two teammates. So the rich get richer with the energy in this event anyway. As Renomi Komovidioyo will see us in the 50 freestyle later in this matchup. But the big eyes for energy standard, Maddie Bannock, you know, she put on a racing suit. She races in Knoxville, Tennessee for the Tennessee Lady Vols now a graduate swimmer, put on a race suit, won a lifetime best four years after she did in September and found a spot on James Gibson's roster and managed she performed at 23 years old. Oh, what a swim she had in match number six, 55-69, only five one-hundredths of a second behind her teammate. And you throw in Louise Hansen up there in lane eight. This is a, a really good start to the very first day here on this double header. Well, Chroma Vidyoyo, we heard coming into this match that she just got a few more days of rest, and we'll see if she could do a little bit better. But Skirdai and Hansen out to the early lead in four and eight. Well, you know, she did not perform well in that match number four where she finished eighth in the 100 butterfly. And I, I, I'm a little surprised they put her in here and didn't kind of hold her back for the 50 freestyle a little bit later on against Shoystrom, but they need all the points they can get. Ah, Toronto trying to pull the upset here in the first match and Hansen looks pretty good out on the outside. Can Hansen touch the wall first? Skirdai battling it down the home stretch and it's going to be, oh, Skirdai got her 56.03 just by nine one hundredths of a second. Uh, that's a nice swim to start for Skirdai and Energy Standard. They finish 1-3 there, which is going to be big, big points for them. But Hansen gave it a run, didn't she? She came back really well. 30 flat on the way back, Bernie. 
56-1-2, and you're right, so close in the end. There she is to the right-hand side of your sc screen. Skirt I didn't quite go as fast as she did last week. Bannock fell off the pace a little bit. Still finished third, 56-4. Good, solid swim. Chroma Viojo finished fifth in that race, but a good start there for Energy. Yeah, Energy Standard has already built a six-point advantage early on. on Toronto. First and third in their first battle of the day. And in some ways it gets even better for them here in the Men's Hunter Butterfly because Chad Laclo, he's about to be introduced. He's gonna be in lane number four. He's got four wins in this event, including coming off 49, 39, he looked so much better his last time on the pool deck. He really did, Bernie. I, I, I thought he looked like a completely different swimmer than the very first matchup. And, you know, if I'm energy, I, I think you take a couple of your superstars here and you throw them back to work. I, I don't think you need Chad LeClo to perform at his best to win this race. In fact, he's the only rated swimmer among these eight marching out right now. Comes in seated third behind Shields and Dressel. Won't get a chance to swim against them this weekend. So, you know, I, I, I say throw him back to work. He'll be tough on the relays, and uh, he should win this easily. ISL second rated swimmer in this event. Scored 190 and a half points. Tom Shields has swum the fastest time in all of ISL 2020 so far. He's the only swimmer under 49 seconds. But Chad LeClose got the fastest time in history in this event. 48.08 is the world record, and it's almost a half a second behind anybody or ahead of anybody else. So what will he do? How he will he race it? Last week, he kind of played with the field a little bit, especially in the 200 fly, and then just blasted the last 50. Looks like he's gonna have to do the same thing here. Yeah, look at the start by the 40-year-old Nicholas Santos. We would have expected him to be in contention in the 50 butterfly, but he and LeClo just about even with 25 meters to go. Who will have the better turn? Expect LeClo to fly off yeah. this wall. Uh, th this is where you, you almost expect it to just be a blast last 25, and there he goes. LeClo takes the lead, and he gets his fifth win. And it's a jackpot for Chad LeClo, who's going to score 15 points in that battle. Well, he's 23-1 going out, Bernie. Great start there in front of you. Just a beautiful entry there. Kind of bring those feet together right at the last minute to enter through that same hole. Again, a beautiful stroke he has. A little higher than normal swimmers. You know, they're usually a little bit lower and forward moving. He comes a little higher. But 23-1 going out, you know, right there with Santos, who was a, about 5 100s faster, but how about 26-3 coming home? That's about a second faster than anybody else. Well, Chad LeClo, he is a game changer indeed for Energy Standard. They take the first two butterfly events of the day in, in jackpot fashion. Energy Standard now leading with 33 points. Five-time Olympian Mark Foster down in the pool deck with Chad LeClo. Well, the defending champions, they found their form. Chad LeClo with his fifth 100 butterfly win as Energy Standards on top. Well, there she is backstage, Kylie Moss, Lisa Braddon. They led Toronto to a big surge in this event in their last match with a 1-2 finish with Braddon getting the win, but this is one of our most competitive races all day long. Five swimmers rated in the ISL top 10 
And across the board, we have Bratton with two wins in this race, Moss with two wins in this race, Emily Seabom has a 200 backstroke win, and Amy Bilquist, who's swimming her final weekend of her ISL career, unless obviously DC Train can move into the semifinals. Yeah, three different winners, and you throw in Kali Moss, who might be the best backstroker overall of any of them, and this is uh, this is a heck of a 200 backstroke, as you mentioned, five rated swimmers, and four of the five fastest thus far of the season are in this race. So. Yeah, the only swimmer that's won this event this season that's not here is Beta Nelson yeah. for the Cali Condors. Outside of that, the uh, backstroke specialists are here, and we expect Billquist, Braddon. Funny things happen when you're swimming for the final time, Rowdy. When you're down to just a handful of races left in your career, one way or another. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point. You gotta lay it all on the line here. There is potentially no tomorrow for Amy Bilquist and DC Trident. So you wanna try to just do what you can to get your hand on the wall first here. And we're gonna see Bilquist down in lane number two. Bratton and Kylie Moss, now they're on the right side in seven and eight. Energy Sanity could see at the bottom, leading with 33 points early on. Team Iron with 19 points. Of course, you get nine points for an event win. Look at Kylie Moss pushing the pace. Kylie Moss and Seabom, both of them are out there, as expected. Seabom kind of had different strategy uh, in the previous matchup. She came back much stronger the first race she did in the 200 and then really went out for it in the second race. So this is again a race where she's kind of taking the, the lead here and Bratton kind of staying right with her, which is dangerous for everybody else in the field because Bratton will come home faster than anybody else. And the four suspects we talked about, all right there together. Man, this is going to be fun, third 50. And it's all interesting, Roddy, because it goes down to the strategy. Some swimmers want to push the pedal a little bit more. Some yeah. want to wait to the third or fourth 50. Boy, look at this. I mean, they, they are all within three or four tenths of a second on the second 50. And if you look at the splits on this third 50, look how close of a bet. Somebody's going to be fourth, and that's going to be a tough thing. 30.9 to 31.2. And guess who was 30.9? Lisa, Far right. Lisa Bratton has taken the lead. And by the way, jackpot time in this event, 4.8 seconds. And only the winner gets the jackpot points. So somebody is going to earn a lot of points for their team. Will it be Bratton, Mass, Seabom, or Bilquist? Oh, Seabom's making a late push down in lane number three. She has moved into first. She did and she it. does it. Seabom snatches it away from Braddon. Wow. I did not see that coming from the veteran. Five Olympic medals to her credit. A woman that has been there so many times. Won the very first match. And here she is in match seven doing it all over again. You can see those four rated swimmers 32 one hundredths of a second separated one through four there. Bilquis was fourth at 201.88. She didn't go quite as fast, talking about Seabom, I mean, excuse me, Bratton, but she was right there at the end as well. Five one hundredths of a second behind Seabom, and Seabom goes her best time of the season by over a half a second. That'll bring a smile to the face, beating a tremendous field. And the jackpot points going to see bomb as well. 15 points for energy standard. Mark Foster is down with Seabomb who wins the 200 backstroke.
tonight and keeps getting better because Evgeny Rilov is in this heat for energy standard. There's only two swimmers, Roddy, that are rated in the ISL top 10. Rilov coming in rated number three. Pebbly rated number five. And again, in the battle for this match, it was big the last time that Toronto and Energy Standard matched up with one another because Toronto took a whole lot of points on the women's side. And this time, the story is Energy Standard takes those points. That's going to make things a whole lot better. Now we're going to see Pebbly and Reloff battle here on the men's side. Yep, the only two rated swimmers, unlike the women's 200 back one. This one's a little thin depth-wise, but Reloff, fourth fastest swimmer in history. World Championship gold medalist a couple years ago in this event, the 200 backstroke. He's been 147 flat. He won last week 148.3, which is the third fastest time behind Murphy and Kavecki. Yeah, and I think, Brady, for a, a lot of these swimmers, you can see what a difference uh, a day makes for them or, or a week makes because Rieloff was third his first time out. Mm -hmm. Now he wins the 200 back. So the question is, you know, once you start to get that momentum, it can become a pretty big thing. And this is what you expected. Rieloff and Pebbly, they're in two and three. Pebbly in the white cap, Rieloff in the red cap, and two one hundredths of a second separating those two swimmers. And, and, and Pebbly's in the same situation as his teammate, Amy Bilquis, and the fact that swimming for DC, you know, he, he gained a lot of confidence winning that 100 backstroke in the last match. So I think here he really needs to kind of go out with Reloff as much as possible. Don't let him get away early, which he's doing right now. 53-4 for Reloff, so he's backed off. He was 52-9 last week when he went 148-3. Pebbly's about the same as he was. Actually, about five-tenths of a second slower, 54-2. And Energy Standard is hoping that Kolesnikov can kind of find his form as well. This is a swimmer that was third at the ISL final in Las Vegas in the 50 backstroke, and he finds himself in the battle for third at this moment, but it's Reloff followed by Pebbly, but a second and a half is the lead for Reloff at the moment. Yeah, another race for Reloff that just, just looks so comfortable, Bernie. I mean, he, he's just, there's no pressure on him right now, and he knows it. He can see Pebbly back there. He can see his teammate, Kaleshnok, Nikoff, and who hasn't really performed up to expectations. He's the ninth fastest swimmer in history, and he's going to be third. Oh, energy standard four, four, four to start the match. Kolesnikov will get third. Reloff coming through in a big way. He gets the win and the 200 backstroke. Man, it has been all about energy standard here early on leading the match by 28 points, four wins in their first four races, but I think Kelsey Wog and Toronto are thinking enough is enough. 200 breaststroke <laughs> is next. I think you're right. I think Toronto is in good shape to win this one and finally get on the board here with a big victory. There's Ida Holko. She's had a really great short Breaststroke, more known for the 50. We're going to see her really be in contention later. Maybe uh, a chance to give a run to Benedetta Palato. And again, Palato has been a big addition for Energy Standard, the uh, Italian record holder that's only 15 years old. But they're keeping her at the 50 and the 100, which are her specialties, and she's been very good at. And so that certainly gives a, a good chance here for Kelsey Wog, who has the second fastest time of the year only behind Lily King in uh, just about a second or so behind what King has gone. Comes in rated number three. That rating might move up if she can win again here. She's already won twice this season, match three and match six. So unless something crazy happens, I, I certainly think she should win here. Bethany Gallat is also one to look out for from DC, also rated fifth. She comes in with the eighth fastest time. And Wag is one of 10 Canadians for this Toronto Titans team. Obviously one of the two expansion teams 
going up to Canada and the Tokyo Frog Kings adding the ISL's first ever Asian team. And just like Kylie Moss joining the squad, it was big for them to get Wog and kind of build a, you know, these teams, they're not just based in a city, they're very international. It's not a full Canadian team, but again, to have that, that great route that you have 10 Canadians is a big deal. And I think overall, if you look at the performances by these expansion teams, Toronto and Tokyo, who we'll see a little bit later on today, they have done a tremendous job with recruiting some really great swimmers, obviously from their home country, but beyond as well. Yeah, Wog is in the lead. Wow, really fast going out. 105.8, Bernie. That's about a half a second faster than she went last week when she went 217.1. So quicker on the way out. Again, this is a, a very controlled race. Well, man, you might think jackpot at the moment here because we've seen three out of the first four races go to the jackpot. The jackpot time in this one, 5.4 seconds. Oh, two and a half seconds is the difference and it's her teammate. Yeah, they are now running 1-2. Uyet, who has 143.5. She comes in with a seven fast this time, so this would be huge for Toronto. Not only will they jackpot the points, but they'll keep them between themselves, one and two, and Wog on pace to put in a great performance here. Again, Lily King has the fastest time of the season of 216 flat. Gallon has moved into second, down in lane number two, but Wog is gonna get the win. 217-13. First and third for Toronto, and indeed, it's going to be a big jackpot going the way of Kelsey Wog, who wins the battle. 217-13, 15 points going to Wog, and combined with their teammate, they score 21. And it's a whole lot closer now. Toronto only down by 11. Yeah, you know, it, 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 just a couple of things could have happened there. Uh, you know, if, if uh, maybe if Bratton and Moss would have won to the, the back there, that would be even closer. So there's a lot of time left, and Wog clearly in control. She went exactly the same time as she went last week, to the 100th, 217-1-3. So she's had back-to-back -back lifetime best swims. Good tight turn, keeps that head down, facing the bottom of the pool, comes out of that hole so well, and then finishes on that full stroke, exactly what you want to do. And Gallat had a nice job getting second there. Yeah, see, this is how the match starts to evolve. But again, it shows you how important the win was earlier for Sivan, but Waugh gets the win for Toronto. She's down in the pool deck with Mark. Kelsey Wog, that's a big time performance for her. And it just keeps getting better for Toronto because they have Anton McKee, who won this event in match number three, second in match six. He's actually the NCAA runner up at Alabama, but now he is a part of the Toronto Titans. Look at this, he's got the Alabama A on his back. There you go, roll tide. Should I be saying that? Wait a second, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Should be saying War Eagle. But he, he had a great career at Alabama, and uh, he's the guy to beat. No question about it. Second rank set thus far. You got three rated swimmers in here. And, and three swimmers in here have all gone lifetime best here in the ISL season. So that's something to look for. But again, it's a doubleheader day among the intrigue of the day. Later today, the only two unbeaten teams will go head to head. London Roar and Cali Condors, but in this event later, Marco Koch, who was so close to the world record, is gonna go at it again. And it uh, would have been interesting to see Anton McKee swim right next to 
Marco Koch because those two are, were separated by quite a bit. Yeah. Early on in this one, it's pretty tight. As we go along, I think when we start to build into these semifinals and you start to see the McKees and the Cooks and the uh, Pearsons and the Sato, I mean, start to all swim together all in one pool. It's just going to get more and more exciting. So, again, I, I, if I'm somebody like McKee, I, I, I feel good about Toronto being in that final eight. I really do. I think they'll be in that semifinal. So it's okay to tinker with strategy here a little. Maybe swim it a little bit different than you went last week. Last week he was 58-6 going out. This time he is 59-9 going out. So he's much slower going out. He really went out with Cock last week. This time he's going to have to do it on the back half. Right next to him is Team McPerson, European short course silver medalist in this 200 breaststroke. He's finished third twice so far this season, but right now he is right within range, and this is what we expect. McKee is a back half kind of racer. Here he goes in the second half of this 200 breaststroke. Yeah, that's what he did in match number three when he won it. He came off the pace and really put together a great last 100, and you can kind of tell it's building to that right there. He's 30.9 on that 50, Bernie. Nobody even close to breaking 31. Well, this could be another jackpot. Five seconds is the jackpot time. Here comes McKee. Cope is the only one within range of Toronto as McKee is going to lead the way for a one, two, finish. Race is trying to get in before they have their points stolen away. And it looks like he's only going to steal Stupin and Verasto's points. But big time performance there by Toronto. 12 points McKee getting for the jackpot. And he's Toronto with a one point lead now. Yeah, Bernie, he's a little slower, obviously, 203 flat than he went uh, last week. But the, the key for him is he keeps experimenting. Remember, I mean, uh, let's not forget, and I'll say it over and over again, nine months is a long time without competing. So it's okay to have a little bit of different strategy here and there because he came back as fast as he did last week. He just didn't have quite the speed this time, but really stretching into that last finish there, full stroke, keeping his head down, charging forward. That's a nice swim and a really great job for Toronto from a team perspective. Well, Anton McKee has his second ISL win. Down on the pool deck with Mark. have Toronto on top. First opportunity for double points. Four by 100 freestyle relay. And how big again was that swim by Seabomb? Again, that's the, the critical thing about the jackpot is all the points go to the winner. And Can as opposed imagine? to going to right. Toronto as we potentially expected with Kylie Mosh, she got her hand on the wall first. And that's the reason why we don't see Toronto with a much bigger lead at this yeah, point. Can you imagine what the difference would have been? And they'll look back to that race potentially as seeing, being, as we've said a lot over the last few days, Bernie, you and me and Mark, a game changer. <laughs> All right, break down the relays for us, Mr. Gaines. Well, you know, on paper, this certainly looks like energy. Um, and one reason, Iron does not have Chroma Videoyo. She is not swimming on this relay, I don't believe. No, she's not on the relay. They took her off, getting arrested for the 50 freestyle coming up. DC Trident could be a factor. Toronto could be a factor. The, the problem is, is they don't have that 51 flat, 51 flat to 51.5 swimmer. And energy standard does. So 
No, they don't have Joystrom on this relay, but they've got Hahi, who went 51-1, leading off their relay the other day. So they just don't have somebody. Toronto's fastest was Coleman at 52-1. Gear was fastest at 52-4. So they match up pretty good, but they don't have that 51 low at the end. And that's that's just a death sentence when you, when you come to a, a situation like the relay where you have to have that outstanding swim at some point or another on a relay like this. But of course, the relay is our first opportunity. Double points, 18 points goes to the relay winner in Energy Standard. They're the early leaders. 52-4 for Plume. She was 52-2 a few days ago, so another solid leadoff. She's, she's been quietly having uh, under the radar great meet. Remember Olympic gold medalist in the 50 freestyle, so she's just kind of really doing a nice job getting energy out there to an early lead. All right, panic now in the pool. Again, that great story of, you know, the how the coronavirus has impacted a lot of swimmers. Maybe it was just enough rest for Bannock to, to find what she needed, put on a racing suit, won a lifetime best, and found her way onto this Energy Standard team. And now here she is getting the relay team out to the lead halfway through. Another unheralded swimmer. We've seen so many here, 52-9 for her. Uh, again, uh, some solid swims across the board. You've got Toronto, at, at Hanson and Fish going 53 flats. They're kind of hanging in there, but the hockey's coming up. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 they don't have somebody that can match up with her. And at, at this point, Bernie, I'm not sure a 51 flat for anybody else would do any good anyway because they built such a lead. But let's say Toronto chases her down with Coleman, who was 52-1 last week. I, I don't know. Yeah, this is Hahi leading the way. Oh, there you go. That's Hahi. Coleman. <laughs> Sorry, Hahi was third. And Hahi was third. Again, 51-1. Now, she's not going to be 51-1 here, but you've got Hahi giving them a big lead. And then you've got Hemskirk at the end. She's 51-7 there. Coleman did her job at 52 flat. But, you know, uh, again, you have Hahi, the only swimmer at this point, to go 51. Pretty good battle going on for third place between Toronto's second team, Energy Standard's second team, and Team Iron, but looks pretty good for Energy Standard that they are going to get the relay win here and get back on top. Well, let's look ahead a little bit. Uh, I mean, you've got Hemskirk, you've got Hahi, eventually you'll have Shoystrom. Can you imagine that trio? going against any relay. You can throw anybody in there. Of course, you throw Plume 52-2, which is so solid, and that is a great relay. Toronto, by the way, is having a good one. Energy Center, they're gonna go first and third with the Toronto Titans squeezing in between. Energy Standard breaking over the 100 mark, leading the battle right now early on with 107 points. There he is, backstage, the ISL's top-rated 50 freestyle, Florent Manadou, about to do battle. Four times he's won this race. Is there anyone that can step up with him? I don't think so, Bernie. I, you know, Lobanovic, perhaps right next to him from Iron comes in with a third fastest time, but the problem is 20.9. He went 20.5 a few days ago. Doesn't, doesn't seem like that much from, you know, from an outsider looking at it, 20.5, 20.9, but as you know, that's a lifetime in a 50 freestyle. And the key for Manadou is not only has he won this race four times, but he wants your points. He even wants Simonis Billis's <laughs> points. <laughs> <laughs> he will be able to steal some here, I think. 0. 0.85 is the uh, the jackpot time. And again, the number one rated swimmer, former world record holder in this event until Dressel took it away in the ISL season last year. He won the skins, came up just short in the MVP battle, but eyeing some big points here.
Good start by Manitou. Uh, you know, the guy still can get off the block at .63. Right next to him, the 24-year-old Hungarian Lobanovsky. He won this race as well, but it is Manadu and Lobanovsky battling, and Manadu gets the win, and he's going to get the points as well. Boy, his turnover is just incredible. That last 10 meters, Bernie, it's just so amazing that the turnover increases, the tempo increases so rapidly without slipping in the water. It's almost like Lobanovsky's got him right there at the 35 meters. He's like, I'm with you, I, I might do this. And then he just turns on a completely different jet the last 15 meters. And he, again, a brilliant starter, brilliant off the blocks, so much power, so much force. This is one big guy. I've, I've talked about he is just a beast. And when he comes off the wall, watch the turnover. Right there, the red cap. See how he increases that? Puts his head down, and it's just amazing how he gets into the wall. Like, powers his way through. Oh, a thing of beauty. Another win into the column for energy standard. They took both Hunter Butterflies, both 200 backstrokes. We saw the breaststrokes go to Toronto, but energy standard back to their winning ways and back on top with 119 points. Battle of the top two freestylers in history. And again, uh, we heard a moment ago the Renomi Kovovic yo yo is going to be in lane number five. They rested her off the relay so she would be fresh here. Choice from back onto the pool deck for energy standard. She also was rested. Did not swim the hunter fly, did not swim the relay. So they both come in here fairly rested. Now, Chromo Vioyo did swim the Hunter Butterfly at the beginning of the program, which was about 45 minutes ago, Bernie. Chromo Vioyo has won this event twice. Scheustrom has won this event four times. But for Scheustrom, she's got four wins out of five races. She's only finished second one time ever. That was to Kate Campbell in the European Derby a year ago. The top two in history about to battle. Race of the day. Very rare you get number one, number two all time. Right there in the middle. Red cap, black cap, right next to each other. Well, 0.62 on Scheustrom. So no back trouble there. Kromova Yo-Yo last off the blocks at 0.71. But she's first into the turn, and Kromova Yo-Yo, let's see how good she gets off the oh, wall. Great she is turn staying there. down, and Kromova Yo-Yo coming up even with Choistrom, but Choistrom is going to pull into the lead, and she gets the win. Choistrom back into it and back on top. Oh, what a race for Sarah Choistrom, who earns 12 points with a win. That's got to feel good. It certainly didn't disappoint, did it? It, it, it was build up. We build up races so much, don't we? And we think sometimes we get so disappointed. No disappointment whatsoever in this race. The two greatest swimmers in the history of the sport in the 50 freestyle. Look at Crumb of a Yo-Yo with that dark cap come off with that great dolphin kick. But it's just like Manadu Scheustrom with that great turnover at the end in 14 one hundredths of a second was the difference. And two great veterans, two of the greatest sprinters in history going at it. And Hemskirk, her teammate saying, nice job. And Hemskirk doing a great job there as well. Now Sarah Choistrom, who won in Las Vegas a year ago, her fifth win in the 50 freestyle. Yeah, big win for Sarah Choistrom. She's down on the pool deck with Mark Foster. Backstage, the Iron Lady Katinka Hosu awaiting her moment in the 200 IM. But first, Ben's 200 IM coming onto the pool deck. And they feel like for Team Iron that this is the part 
of day one that they can really surge. Obviously, they felt like Renomi Cuomo would start to take back the lead and get some momentum, but this is an even better event as they lead the way with Leonardo Santos, the only ISL-rated swimmer in this event, Brazilian who won bronze at the Pan Am Games in 2019. He's going to be in lane number five. Bernie's also a good 400 IM or winning the silver at those same Pan American Championships. So you know the guy's not going to get tired. He's probably better in the 400 IM. Fourth rank so far, as far as the clock goes, 152.8, but not far behind the top rank swimmer of Vazayos. He went 142.84 in match four, the top time of the year, 152.65. So you can see that rating of Abram Devine, though who has just, he's been right there, you know, second once, he was third once. This is a guy that can finally break through and get his first win here in the 200 IM. I, I think he has that chance. And again, he's got to go for broke, as DC does almost every race. Yeah, but a second in the best times this season, separating Santos and Divine, and I would agree that the first couple of matches you could kind of throw out times, but now that we're on match number seven, I think that it's pretty true to see what type of form these swimmers in. Uh, I know that we expect resting and shaving and, and a little bit of taper, if you will, as we move to the semifinals and the finals where maybe we get that extra bonus. I know you think that we could see four world records. But but don't you think that would be more on the upper tier? I, I, I think the Callies and the Energies, the Londons, I, I think they're kind of in the mode of everything's pointing to those semis right. and finals. But you're so right. With DC, Iron, even Toronto, you, you really got to feel like you're moving ahead and making those times. Abram Devine is second right there, 52-8. Only six-tenths of a second behind Santos. Santos' weakest stroke is breaststroke. No question about it. That's his weak stroke. It's not an especially strong stroke, Devine, but Devine has a weakest on the freestyle, so he needs to get there and start getting even with Santos because Santos right now has a very good freestyle. Yeah, it looks like Santos is going to have the lead and to Markin right behind him, currently swimming third, and a chance for Team Iron to get a little momentum here in the 200 IM. Santos 33-3 on that split, and fell off 33-7 to Divine. How about Leonardo Santos, second in match two, wins match four, and he's going to take the title in the 200 IM here in match number seven. One, two, finish for Team Iron. That'll help him. Yeah, it, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look at the splits and there was not a, nothing that was really spectacular, but just solid all the way through. His first 50 fly was great, 24-3. That's really quick going out. But from there, he was just right there. 27-9, 33-3, came home in 27-6. Wasn't the fastest splits of anybody except for the backstroke but uh, he, and, the, and the butterfly, uh, actually. But he was just very solid. That's a, that's a very good performance. Followed his, up his 152.8 with a 153.1 there. My and Iron, that's what they needed. They're going to pick up 10 points on their deficit with Toronto. And a new standard remains on top, but it keeps getting better here in the 200 IM. And we've been waiting for Katinka Hosu to have a breakout swim. She does come in as the number three ISL rated swimmer in this event, the highest in the field, but she's got the 10th fastest time this season. Just haven't seen the, the Katinka Hosu that we expect to see so far in ISL 2020. Yeah, you have three of the six rated swimmers with Anderson and Wog right there with her. But you're right, Bernie. I, I, we, we haven't seen that fire, you know. I, I haven't seen that Katinka Hosu that, we's, that we're just so used to seeing in so many ways. And here she is, the world record holder in this event. At 31 years of age, the world record is over two seconds faster than anybody else has ever swum. And that was Melanie Margalis, 
who did that the very first weekend for Cali. 204 flat. I, and a lot of people questioning about whether this Iron Lady is in the twilight of her career. I would never write her off. <laughs> in no way. <laughs> uh, and again with the coronavirus, certainly we have seen a lot of the swimmers come in in uh, different forms, if you will. Some of them right on their game. Some of them, you know, Abby Wood, for instance. Obviously, we've seen her win this event for the New York Breakers. She is swimming best times, and she traded the pool for the bike, and it paid big dividends. But for some swimmers, maybe trading the pool for the bike doesn't provide the, the same bang, and they need to be in the pool every day as well. Yeah, that's certainly true. And, and it's Golkova who has really kind of taken the lead out early. She was 27-6. Hosu was fourth after the butterfly leg. Well, Team Iron, they could use the win no matter which way you slice it. Mary Sophie Harvey in the red cap. There you see her on the left side in lane number three. She is now taking the lead, but this is awfully tight and everything changes on the breaststroke leg. And look at Katinka Hosu. She's trying to find her form. She's trying to get her first 200 IM win. Well, if you're a Hosu fan, you like that split right there. 32 flat on her back. That was faster than anybody else. And, and the strength that she's had in the past is coming off that with a great breaststroke. Here in the ISL, she has not had that breaststroke. But you can expect that Wog would take yeah. the lead based on her performance earlier. And look at Kelsey Wog surge into the lead. Oh, she has built quite a lead on the rest of the field. 35-5. That is quite the breaststroke leg. Saplucha was right there at 36-4. And she moves up four spots. She went from sixth to, seven, uh, to second. What a breaststroke leg for Wog. But here comes Katinka Hosu coming down. Can Wog hold her off or will it be the Iron Lady? No, it's Toronto, it's Wog, and she does it on the breaststroke leg. And they go one, two. Wog and Sapucha. They both beat Hosu at the end. I thought Hosu might catch Sapucha, but so Plucha held her off by three one hundredths of a second. And again, the time, not especially fast. Wog 2066, fast for her, no question. She goes her lifetime best in this event. Oh no, she's right off of it, sorry. She owes 2066, she's been 2062. But there she is in lane number seven, and you're right, Bernie, that 35 plus split, 35-5 on the Breaststroke, 30.3. <laughs> she came back to the field in a hurry. Saplucha charged with a 29-7 at the end. Hosu made it interesting with a 29-5, but Toronto finished 1-2, and that was important for them. It's early, but you're looking at the MVP leader in Kelsey Wog for Toronto leading the way with 25 points. Kelsey Wog with her second win of the day. All right, this is one we've been waiting for, folks. The 50 breaststroke, Imari Saki. Comes in ISL second rated swimmer, Ilyas Shamanovich, the ISL's top rated swimmer. Saki was the first Turkish swimmer to win a medal at the European Short Course Championships. He found himself only 0.25 off of the world record. He broke an uh, ISL record. We see Shamanovitz and Saki battle against one another for the first time. In fact, Saki broke the European record just a couple of days ago. Watch this race. One 25 one hundredths of a second off the world record, and Shimanovich 39 one hundredths of a second off the world record. Can they get a little closer? Ah, that's a beautiful start by my Shimanovich. 0.59, the only one under 0.60. That will give him the lead going into this wall. 
But it's Saki in lane number five, 25, 25. That is the world record. Shimanovic trying to catch him, but nobody's going to catch Saki. How good will it be, Saki? Oh, only four one hundredths off the world record. Oh, my goodness. So very close. Oh, and he knew it. Yikes! Look at that time. 25 29. Four one hundredths of a second off a world record that has stood for 11, 11 years. <coughs> what a performance by Saki. Of course it goes without saying, that is a new ISL record. Anton McKee was disqualified for some movement at the start and oh, Saki is the second so fastest in history. You almost got the first of your four world records that you thought that we would see during the course of ISL 2020. It's going. It's going. Give it time. Give it time. Saki's got, uh, at this point, it looks like at least two more cracks at it. Final regular season matchup in the iron. Looking pretty good to move on to the semifinals. It's brewing. It, it, it just it needs some time to brew, my friend. All right. 50 breaststroke in the fresh face onto the scene and Benedetta Polato. She's going to be in lane number four. We told you we didn't see her in the 200 earlier, but she won the 50 and the 100. Ida Holko, she swam for Florida State. She's going to be in lane number six. She comes right behind Polato time wise. And again, this may be the difference maker because Holko is a finished swimmer and as opposed to electing to go back to Florida State, she elects to join the ISL. Palato obviously is another case of going pro at 15 years old, uh, kind of like a, a young Michael Andrew, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good analogy there. She's in lane four. And Bernie, this is a heck of a field when you think about it. Five of the 10 fastest thus far this season are in the field, including four rated swimmers. It looks like Ida Holko is getting out to a really good start. She's at the black cap on the right side now in lane number six. She turns first. Remember Palato, she was the skins winner in breaststroke. Laukinen trying to move up as well and Holko trying to hand Palato her first loss, but Pilato comes surging down the stretch. Hoko! Oh, Hoko wins. Team Iron Breaststroke Masters. There you go. How about Ida Hoko? That is the upset of the day, and Iron is now on fire right now. Six one hundredths of a second over the youngster and I thought Palato came off the wall much better. She had a much better pullout. It wasn't so much coming into and out of the wall here. They're pretty even, but when she came up through that hole, the initial breakout stroke was where I thought Palato had her. And it looks like she has her here, but look at the quick tempo at the end by, uh, by Hoko and she really kind of finished on a half stroke. I think she had a capability to be a little faster. That's a great race, two great races. Now you blink, and Team Iron, they have moved into second with some breaststroke dominance. Uh, Team Iron, they waited for their moment, and they have taken second by six points. 400 freestyle relay on the men's side. Up next on the pool deck, again, 18 points for a relay win. Obviously, that helps you, but the worst news is if you finish eighth, you only get two points. And again, for a floor Manadu and company, we just saw him battle in the 50 freestyle, and moments later, he has to jump onto the pool deck and battle here in this 400 freestyle, and it's tough to do back-to-back. -to -back. 
It is it is tough. And talk about back to back, the yep. anchor for energy or actually the anchor for iron is coming right out of the breaststroke. We saw him almost break the world record when he anchors Iron, who comes in as the favorite. Believe it or not, it's the, one of the few times I haven't said that energy is a huge favorite in a relay. Well, they're not. I mean, at least based on what they performed the last few times they've swam this relay. It really depends on Manadu on the anchor. He was 47 flat, Bernie, on their 400 free relay last week, but he was 45-7 on the medley relay. So if he decides to jump on this free relay, then it makes it very interesting between Energy, Iron, and Toronto. All of them, depending on Manadu's anchor, are separated by about a half a second. Nine, 18 points for a relay when you can bet that Iron would love to finish in the top two here in this match and earn three points. That would help them secure their spot in the semifinals. Billis is going for the A relay for energy. Iron goes, long, goes with Mignon. They were both around 47 flat last week as leadoffs. Good, solid leadoffs. DC Trident is going with Santana. And down there in, in, for Toronto is Casillo, who was 47-1, is putting together a pretty good one here. Yeah, Casillo is going to get Toronto back on top here. The first of four legs of the relay. Toronto's got a good relay, and that's a much better split. Boy, if, if, if Toronto ever needed a, a great leadoff, they just got it from Casil, who went from 47-1 last week to 46-7 there. That will really help them because they're going to need a lead going in with Manadu anchoring. Tom DeBoer in second for Iron as Matt Grievers tries to give chase. Grievers was 46-9 on the B relay for Energy, so he got moved up and bumped up to the A relay. And here comes Toronto and Chadwick. And Chadwick was 46-6, exactly what he went, so he did his job. A couple 47 ones or 47 lows for Iron. And Grievers certainly did his job for Energy Standard. He's pulled within 18 100s for LeClo and Orsi. Blake Peroni, look at the lead for Toronto. Can anybody catch him? Uh, I mean, Zach Apple. Going on the third leg, he has certainly moved DC Triton within range, trying to battle out for a second, but it's hard to imagine anybody catching Toronto well, at this moment. Yeah, it, you say that, but now we have a huge wild card. Without a doubt, the key for Toronto is Maron Charuti. He was not on the relay last week, A or B relay. So they're going with a guy that's fresh, fresh legs, have no idea what he's capable of doing. So. Actually, they're going to go with Hayden. They've changed that now with Hayden at the end. Peroni, 45-9. Oh. And there is Manadu, Brent Hayden, who's been so strong for Canada for so many years. Coming back, here comes Manadu. Still a second lead for Hayden and Toronto. The Titans. Proving to be the spoilers. They get the relay win. 18 points going to the Toronto Titans. And how about that veteran? Brent Hayden, 46-9 on the end. They led from start to finish, and it all had to do with Casillo's 46-7 or 46-6 leadoff leg. What a brilliant top to bottom. Look at the splits, Bernie. 6'7", six, 6'6", six, six, for Peroni and 6'9", for Brent Hayden, the veteran who's on the comeback trail. Every time he swims, he's going to gain some confidence. You're really pulling for a guy like that. Yeah, but how good was the relay for Energy Center? They actually outscore Toronto by two. And Energy Center remains on top with 191 points. Well, right now at the moment, it is Iron currently second with 153 points. But Toronto, they have a big event upcoming. Kylie Moss on the left side of the screen. She won the backstroke skins the last time they battled. And 
She will come in as one of the favorites here in this 50 backstroke, but you can't count out DC Triton. Amy Bilquist is gonna be down in lane number one. Mac is gonna be in two. Mac won this event in match number two. She was second in match five. Certainly she could be one to contend with. Georgia Davies comes in as the sixth rated ISL swimmer, but you would have to think it would either be Mass or Mac here <laughs> in this 50 backstroke. Good luck on calling that. Mass, Mac, Mass, Mac. Hey, you know, and interesting, there's no Emily Seabomb. There you see the duo, the dynamic duo right now, Moss and Bratton, but there's no Emily Seabaum. She won the 200 backstroke earlier. They have decided to take her off and rest her for the relay. A little disappointing on the relay last week with a 57 flat, and I think taking her off that relay will really help energy, and she should be much faster, but it's all up to Kylie Moss now to see if she can grab that back-to-back -back win here in the 50 backstroke. Yeah, only two tenths of a second separate Moss and Mac so far this season. They're gonna be opposite sides of the pool. Kylie Moss up at the top in lane number seven, Mac at the bottom in the white cap in lane number two. They are, I mean, virtually within a tenth or two together the whole season along when it comes to this event. There you see Moss in lane seven to the right of your screen. Oh, but Anique. Anique. She is swimming so well as well. And Mary Sophie Harvey in the middle. But in the end, it's Moss getting it done with her final 10 meter push. Uh, she's had a nice double today. I mean, with that 200 backstroke, even though she didn't win, that's a good double for her. Nice victory and against a tough field here. And, and really made it look easy. 18 one hundredths of a second. Actually, 28 one hundredths of a second was the final margin. Moss, you see her come straight up on the start, keep that head in line with her spine, and then uses her head. The weight of her head, the weight of a head is a, about the same as a bowling ball. So you want to use that to propel you to your target, which is the other end of the pool, dips down just enough, comes off actually a little bit further behind than Hanique, but boy, she swims faster on top of the water. Doesn't have quite the underwaters as Hanique does, but in the end, does the job, and that's a big win for Toronto. And with a win, Toronto only a point behind Team Iron. 163 to 162. All right, 50. Backstroke on the men's side. It's interesting because, again, it's all about the strategy, right? We haven't seen Florent Manadou swim the 50 backstroke. And I would say, again, that's, that goes to the strategy of, of Gibbo and James Gibson, the head coach of Energy Standard. He made an appearance a year ago when it came time for the finals. But here you have Manadou, the, the fastest in history in this event. Uh, I, I think the big difference, Bernie, is that 400 medley relay and what it can create for the skins. I mean, yep. it doesn't take long after this. I mean, it's about 30 minutes past the hour, and that medley relay comes up in like 20, 25 minutes. So there's no use throwing them in, a, in an event, especially now when, where energy is in control, at least at this point. Let's save him for the relay because that skins is important for energy. They really want that freestyle if they win that relay for the men. And they got some help because Grievers is gonna be down in lane number three. It's easy, uh, interesting to, to not see Kolesnikov in this field, but Grievers down in three. Shane Ryan over in lane number eight. He won this event back in match number three in a tie for first with Ryan Murphy, if you remember. Shane Ryan doesn't come up very far, but boy, he is so quick off the block. 0.57, Reloff 0.53, he was the quickest. And Ryan is gonna be the leader at the turn. 
staying down, staying underwater, trying to get the win. I don't think anybody's going to catch Shane Ryan. Toronto, two for two in the backstrokes, and this is a jackpot indeed. Going the way of Shane Ryan. He's going to get 10 points for the win, and he steals away the point from Grievers. We talked about those two at the onset, and who would have thought that Ryan would steal Grievers' points? Yeah, Grievers never was there at the very start. You saw him right there with the red cap. Did not have a good start, did not have a good turn, and he was dead last. 23-9, Ryan doing a great job. Goes his best time of the season, 22.86, just off his lifetime best and just off the top 10 time in the world in history. He's got the ninth fastest performer in history. Yeah, he says, no points for you, Grievers. Toronto getting two wins after Ryan takes the 50 backstroke. All right, backstage, the MVP of match six, Siobhan Hahi getting set to swim the 400 freestyle. Hahi has the second fastest time this year of ISL 2020, your team at the moment. Trying to get their second win of the season, looking pretty good. 207 points. What a battle for second place at the moment. Iron and Toronto separated by only one point. And we had the 400 freestyle men's and women's, and of course the all-important 400 medley relay, and the winner picks the skins. Does help a little bit for those athletes that they have two 400s to cool down a little bit before they have to get on that relay. But again, it's going to be a quick turnaround for Kylie Moss. Yep. She was, what, about uh, 10 minutes ago, so she'll have about 25 minutes. Hahi rated 10th, and that rating will certainly move up the more she swims this race. Already the second fastest time of the season of Melanie Margalis. You might remember that the very first week had the lead of, for about 370 meters. Well, you saw she scored 99 points a year ago. What a difference the jackpot makes. She scored, I think, 61 and a half points in the last match alone. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a, it's a double whammy when you start to throw in Hahi and what she's capable of doing from the 100 through the 400. And, and that's where I think when we get to those semifinals and especially the finals, and I think energy is well on their way to the finals, you know, they can they can kind of pick and choose those matchups, which are so important. At Hahi is in lane number four. Agarova for Toronto out in lane number seven. She was a world finalist in this event of the 400 freestyle at the World Championships. Looking ahead to the schedule on November 9th and 10th, Energy will be back at it with Iron in Toronto again. Uh, but you throw out DC and throw in Tokyo, and that should be an interesting matchup. Hahi was 158.2 going out last week when she went 358.7. But I think the other thing that's interesting, Rowdy, about the ISL, and and truly it is swimming reimagined is the 200 backstroke is a perfect example. I think that a lot of people would be like, uh, it's the same race. We already saw Kylie Mass battle, battle against Emily Seabom. This is what's gonna happen, but every time out we get a different permutation. There's a different swimmer that finishes it on top. And obviously with the jackpot, Seabom touched the wall first and you know she got an extra six points that went her way as opposed to going to Toronto. Hey, that, that's a great point, Bernie, because if you think about it, you go back to the women's 200 backstroke, we had so many different winners. Seabom won the very first match, and then Bilquist and Bratton, they won a couple of them. Beta Nelson won from Cal, so all of us, and none of them were Kylie Moss, and then Seabom takes it again. So you're right, the matchups are going to be fascinating. By the way, Hahi was 159-4, so I think at this point, She's doing whatever it takes to get the win here. She's not 
I don't think she's taken a hard stroke yet. She will not be on the medley relays for uh, energy standards. So this is her last event of the day. And you think that if you're James Gibson, what uh, little change might you make? Because you did lose the medley relay last time, but again, it's a different day. Swimmers swim different ways. Who knows whether your breaststroker is gonna swim the way that they did a week ago. Obviously, Kylie Moss was the game changer in the relay a week ago because she really set the tempo early on. Well, the, the, the difference between the, the first place Toronto Titans and the second place Energy Standard is the fact, not that she did a bad job. Hemskirk anchored that relay at 51.7, but they put Scheustrom on the relay this time. Hemskirk slips down to the B relay, so that, that relay is going to be even more interesting, and that's coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, we already saw a relay win, or excuse me, a 50 freestyle win for Sarah Scheustrom who wasn't a part of that match, out with a bad back and Hahi in the lead, 50 meters to go. 30.6, 30.7, 30 30.5. That 50 right there was 30.2. So just real consistent, uh, consistent. I, I, I love her cadence. She slips that breath to the right. The Gorova is gonna be second. The Andrew MVP Shanko. getting a win. First and fourth for Energy Standard. Tough to get a jackpot in the freestyle. Almost 10 seconds the difference, but we will see Siobhan Hahi. We'll get one jackpot. Snatch away one point. Yep, yep. Nice solid splits. 159.4 going out. 200, 201.1 coming back. So came back a little faster, decided, hey, I'm gonna work my back half this time. And then again, the class to the field. I cannot wait until we see Melanie Margalis and Hahi go at it once more with Flickener in there as well. Ah, uh, the... MVP from last match getting a win. Energy Standard now with 222 points. And Toronto has moved in front of Iron, but only by a point. And things are a whole lot more interesting here in the men's 400 freestyle. And again, we've seen so many of these ISO records go back and forth. And, and I understand there's some people at home are saying, hey, why are you keeping records? It's only season two, but a record is a record. Absolutely. What? Who's saying that? Who's saying it? I want to yell at. I want to yell at him right now. And again, we get some intrigue because we saw, you know, Aubach get the record, wraps his snatch it back, and, and you, I can guarantee you that meant something to him. Well, you know, when Aubach broke the record and and Raps just broke it again. I guarantee he thought about that. Not only did he think about going a lifetime best or close to a lifetime best, he also thought, hey, I got the record back. It's mine now. And this is an interesting race, Ryder, because we saw maybe a, something we just don't see very often. Seeing Grothy and Stepanovic tied for first place in their last match. How often do you see a tie in a 400 freestyle? Well, you rarely see a tie in, in any race. For, for victory. It's happened at the Olympics a couple times in the 50 freestyles. Happened in the 100 free back in 1984, but you certainly don't see it very often in a 400 or above. And and with between teammates, which was even which is even more fun. But right now, Zane Grothy is the number one ISL rated swimmer. Stepanovic ISL rated third, but my money is going to wraps is just with how fast he's swimming and the fact that he's the ISL record holder. He's leading after the first 50, trying to get another win for Energy Standard. And Javon Hahi downstairs with Mark. She won the 400 free on the woman's side.
<laughs> All right, Hahi gets the win, and man, check out Rapsis in lane number four. And then we got a 20-meter uh, a pool that you, Mark, and myself get a chance to swim at, and uh, you almost want to channel your inner Rapsis when you're swimming. I, I don't know if there's any swimmer that has quite this type of smooth stroke that you wouldn't tell every kid around the world especially if you're middle distance and up this is what you want smooth swimming yeah very smooth and and i love his body position in the water it's not real high but that head kind of leads the way it, it it's certainly stays in line with the spine so he keeps it down he doesn't have his head up the bot back of the body is rise it, it has risen up very well a nice steady kick behind him nothing fancy but he was, uh, he was just brilliant again. The first 200, 147.4, just off his 147.1. And, you know, like so many other great distance swimmers we've seen during our, our time, Bernie, like a Katie Ledecky, it's hard to swim by yourself. Yep. And right now, to be able to keep propelling himself to being so consistent, he's 27.7, 27.7, 27.3 on his splits, pretty good. Well, he found, him, found himself about three seconds off the world record. Oh, and he's still got another 50 to go. <laughs> How often do you see that? <laughs> Did you see him stop? 308, that would have been a world record. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, I, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Get the man a lane counter. Andrew Gimmel did that at the Olympic trials. And now all of a sudden he's got a little bit of a race. He's still going to win it. <laughs> Grothy surging home. Oh, oh boy, oh that was goodness. close. Oh, we got to see that again. Watch him stop at the 350. <laughs> oh, what did I do? I, I lost count. Oh my goodness, we've seen it all. It's only one tenth of a second. That almost cost him the victory. Certainly cost him some jackpot points. Watch here. This is this is at the 350, so he's not really looking around. He's done and I don't think he can hear anybody until he shakes his head and then all of a sudden he's going. Whoa, what? I got I have to go again? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I miscounted. <laughs> and I, he must have spent at least three or four seconds on the wall, Bernie. Oh my goodness. That was funny. Funny in the fact that he won. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't have been so funny if he hadn't won. <laughs> and the difference obviously is, you know, this event in the US is the five hundred freestyle, which of course they get lane counters and the right. whole nine yard. No lane counter in the 400 free. No. Well, the ISL champion made it a whole lot <laughs> closer than it should have been here in that 400 freestyle. Rapsis gets the win after taking a little break in that 400 free. Let's go. <laughs> Well, backstage, there she is, Sarah Schroeser, from a big-time upgrade for Energy Standard. They lost this relay to Toronto in the last battle. Of course, the winner of the 4x100 medley relay picks the skins. How big is it to get her back onto the relay for Energy Standard? Well, it, it, it is an upgrade, and you don't want to take anything away from Hem Fimke Hemskirk, who did such a splendid job in her place last week when she went 51 plus. But, you know, to have Shoystrom on there, it's certainly, hey, listen, she's, <laughs> she's the best female swimmer on the planet. I mean, it's to have her on the anchor has got to give you a lot of confidence. Toronto will be good. This will still be a two team race. Toronto and Energy are the two teams that will be battling at the end. They have a formidable relay themselves. Energy Standard, Seabom, Palato, Skirdai, and Schoistrom. Toronto counters with Moss, Wog, Hansen, and Coleman. Lane four and lane eight, likely the places to watch here to see who will pick the skins. 
Toronto is going to need another brilliant leg by Louise Hansen. She was 55-3 a couple days ago. That's what they're going to need. And they're going to need another great leadoff by Moss, who was 56-2, and hope that Seabomb slips right there in front of you. That's Emily Seabomb, who won the 100 earlier. She's 57 flat on the relay last week. I think you'll see a different Emily Seabomb, and if you do, then Toronto and the rest of the teams could be in trouble. Yeah, and remember, we saw Kylie Moss some of the 50 back, so if they kept Seabom out of it, and again, it goes down to the strategy. The question, Roddy, does a 50 backstroke take that much out I, of you? I, oh, yeah, it does. Sure, it does. I, I, I know it's a 50, but it definitely takes it out of you, and and uh, I, I think it was smart for them to, to keep her off. She's right there in second right now, 27-6 going out. Certainly, Moss looks great at 27-2. And if Moss, remember, Moss was eight tenths of a second ahead of Seabomb. Let's see if that strategy pays off. Right now, it sure doesn't look like it. In fact, Bratton looks like she may go by Emily Seabomb. Another good start for Toronto into the lead. Looked like a very safe start for Wog there. Seabomb was a little better at 56.9. She came in second. Moss was a little slower at 56.4. So at least early on, the payoff is there. And let's see if Pilato can come back from the big upset that she had earlier. You remember Pilato had won the 50 in the last matchup. She's gotten energy standard into the lead. Didn't look like a really great start for Kelsey Wog. No, it was a .41 on the takeoff and 30.6 going out. Pilato's 29A, so she went by Wog in a hurry. Now, Wog's got to come back on this last 25. She's been known to be have a great last 25. She's going to have to do it here to give Hanson a little bit of a chance. They're going to need at least seven-tenths of a a second ahead of Toronto. Excuse me, Toronto's going to need at least seven tenths on energy to Man, have a chance. They don't have it. No. Three tenths behind, so it's up to Hansen to try to make up the deficit. And, and what a difference a couple days make. 3 9 on Pilato. She was 104 3 last week. She goes almost a second faster, so they'll look back to this youngster as having a great leg that now gives energy the heads up on winning this relay. And this might even favor Team Iron at the end of the day because if you're energy standard, you might be thinking freestyle. Sarah Schoistra, no. but Ronomi would no. be right in the mix I, as well. I'd go breaststroke. Breaststroke? I know it was Hulk an upset. Home? I don't know though, Bernie. You know, after the upset, I'm not so sure. But yeah, you might want to go free. I, it's not an easy choice for energy. Certainly, they look like they're going to win it. And Hansen. And Shkardai is who looks like she's much better here. 55-3 on Shkardai, wow. 55-7 on Hanson, pretty good too, but this is gonna make it easy for Shoystrom. Shoystrom into the lead, and remember, I don't wanna call it rested, but again, because her back was so sore, obviously her muscles got a little extra rest just while she tried to heal her back, and she looks like she's in great form. She's already taken the 50 freestyle about to lead energy standard to the relay win where they're going to pick the skins, folks. Yep, and what do you choose? Do you go free or breast? I think it depends on how Sarah feels after this meet. Might after even today. be butterfly. Yeah, could be butterfly. You're right. Good eye, Bannock. Well, they'll get to pick. Energy standard wins the foreigner medley and they'll pick the skins and they go first and third in that event. Pretty impressive overall indeed. Yeah, Schoistrom, what a difference a week makes. What an arsenal they have, right? They've got three different 50s that they could choose from. Fly, breast, and free. They don't want to go to back, but boy, they, Ah, that's a tough choice. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the coaching staff trying to make that decision. That's good to have options though, right? 
They have lots of options heading into tomorrow. Let's see if Mark can get it out of them. <laughs> Probably not. Well, Energy Standard gets to pick the skins. 50.6, Bernie, on Sarah Schoistrom. Fastest split by far. The only swimmer to break 51 thus far on any relay at any point in the season. One of the fastest splits in history, 50.6. They went two seconds faster on that relay with Schoistrom. All right, break down the men's side. What are we looking for here? This is this is all energy standard. Unless something really wacky happens on a, a, a false start or somebody having a bad split, I just don't see how they can beat energy standard. They are really, really good here. And this is a team that will be there all the way to the end. Reloff, Shamanovic, Laclo, Manadu, all of them so strong each one of their individual events. So they may have options to think about at the end of the day. Hard to not well, go with Manadu again on the skins, right? Yeah, I, I would think you'd have to go with Manadu. I, I, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but I, I, I mean, just the way he dominated that 50 a couple days ago, especially as he got fat, well, not necessarily faster, but he got better as each one of those 50s went along. That was the big fear. And I don't think there's any fear of that anymore. So I, I definitely think they go with a 50 freestyle with Manadu. All right, Shamanovich dives in after Kolesnikov, 49-1. Boy, energy is just getting better and better. I mean, Kolesnikov, that was the B relay, Bernie. <laughs> Reloff's the A relay. That's the B relay for energy. And right now you have Lima in front of Shemanovic. So apologize there. Shemanovic currently trailing in lane number four. You know, I mean. It's like an inner squad that, need. Exactly. Right now, this is, this is how good this relay is. They were four seconds ahead of any other team with the A relay. And now their B relay, they could go one, two. And there's a fight to the finish between these two teams here. Lima's having a great swim right now. Shemenovich is finally going by him. Not by much, though. <laughs> Look at that. 55-6 on Shemenovich. 56-5 for Lima. All right, Energy in three and four, leading the way with Laclo and Matt Grievers. How versatile is Grievers to be on the relay swim and butterfly? Uh, incredibly versatile. He, you might remember he was on that 400 freestyle relay back in 2008 at the Olympic Games. Put that relay in position to win the gold medal for the United States in that so-called race of the century with Lezak anchoring at the end. He swam in the morning, but boy, look at this relay, Laclo. Oh, this, this relay is going to be as good as LA Current is. All safe starts, 0.38 for Manadu, 49-2 there for Laclo. I, 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 feel, I still think Energy's got a great chance to finish second. 
Reavers was only 51-7, but they're, they're easily going 1-2 right now. Yeah, Manadou could just shut it down. Yeah. He's not, though. No, he's out in 21-9 at the feet, so he hadn't shut it down yet. And Manadou, energy standard, wrapping up an impressive first day. He gets the win. That's the 11th win on day number one for Energy Standard as they go first and second. They'll pick both skins races. He shut it down at the end, 47 flat. Not even breathing hard. And they go 321-9. And believe it or not, they went a second and a half faster a couple days ago. How does that team go faster? And you got me. And, and now they can put Kalashnikov, who went 49-1 on that A relay, and they're a second faster than that. Unbelievable. All right, 11 wins on day number one, but in our MVP battle, a nod to the breaststrokers. Yay, breaststroke. Wog, Saki. 1-2 right now. But still a full day of competition to come, including later today, a battle of unbeatens. Cali Condors, London Roar, about four hours from now. We can't wait to have you right back here at the Duna Arena. But for now, for Mark Foster, Jenny Drummond, Rowdy Gaines, and our entire crew, Bernie Gunther saying so long from Budapest. <laughs>